Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Leah. Uh, well, I did my uh, bachelor in physics and then I, I studied uh, biomedical engineering. Uh, my PhD I did in image processing in the Tel Aviv University and then I did postdoc also in image processing. Um, and now I work in a company called Origin AI and uh, for my hobby I work one day a week at Tel Aviv University at the Department of Mathematics and I'm trying to, to have some fun with ma applied math. Uh, and I'm going to share with you uh, two works that uh, we did uh, at the university. Uh, okay, so let's start. We are going to talk about uh, partial differential equation. And uh, what I try to do um, is to, to find and uh, connect machine learning with, with mathematics. Okay, so uh, let's, do, let's see how we can do it. So partial differential equations are everywhere. Um, it's in fluid mechanics, in physics, it's in imaging, it's in uh, image processing, diffusion, denoising, the blurring. It's also in medicine, in economics, in chemistry. So it's everywhere in our life. So uh, basically what we have, the basic uh, structure, we have some uh, coefficient a, a and b, and the uh, derivative with some order. So for, for this example, we have a du dx plus bx, uh, the second derivative of u with respect to x. So u is, for example, the image, the flow, uh, the MRI image, and so on. Um, so we defined a forward problem. Forward problem is defined such that a and B, the coefficients, which are not constant uh, practically, uh, are known in advance, and we want to find U of X, okay? And the inverse problem is the opposite. So we know U, U usually is the measurement, so you have some measurement, and we are looking for the coefficients A and B. Okay, I will give an example in a few minutes. Uh, so the question is, we, we studied uh, PDE at the university and we, we studied some, uh, some methods. And the question is, can we, can we solve this kind of questions, both the forward and inverse problem, by means of machine learning methods? Okay, this is what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so uh, just, uh, just for notation, uh, we define some uh, differential operator L which is a sum of uh, some coefficient a alpha and derivative of derivative uh, with some order m. For example, we have this uh, L of u, uh, L of u uh, equals to x du dx plus x in the power of three, the second derivative of u with respect to x. So, uh, so here alpha is, uh, the alpha one is x, the alpha two is x uh, to the power of three. And uh, we, what we want to do, we want to solve this equation. We want to solve LU of X equals F of X with some domain omega. And we have some, of course, boundary condition because in PDA we need some uh, boundary condition. This is what we want to do. Okay, so again, in the forward problem, we want to find U given the coefficient A alpha. This is the given to us. And in the inverse problem, we want to find the coefficient a alpha given the measurement u of x. So how can we do it? Uh, so I just give another example. This is a one. This is a one D example. Okay, we have the second derivative of u with respect to x, and this is our boundary condition. So we have uh, two points where we where we have the values. And here we have an example in two D where well, we have the Laplacian of U, and we have this uh, boundary condition, it's a zero on the boundary. So this is just an example for the setting of the PD. Okay, next. Uh, so usually uh, when the classical methods to solve these uh, problems, uh, to use uh, finite elements and finite differences. So in finite element, we have the domain, we, div we partition it into, a, into some uh, some elements, usually some square, some uh, triangles, and we solve 
the equation for n every triangle and get some linear, uh, linear system. In the final difference, we just uh, approximate the derivative according to, to the definition of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the derivative. So this is very, very classical. Uh, the problem with these uh, methods, they have some limitations. For example, um, uh, with the finite element, when we have to inverse a matrix, a lot of times it has a high condition number. So it's, it can be very problematic. Uh, again, it's very, very uh, sensitive to the discretization. Okay, so you see here, for example, uh, that uh, the the square are not fitted exactly on the, on the, on the circle. Uh, high order derivatives are very, very sensitive to noise. Uh, and interpolation and extrapolation values are not straightforward. Okay, so we have some problems with this, with these methods. So what we suggest? Uh, we suggest to, to, um, to solve the PDE by means of a neural network both the forward and inverse problem. So if we are using the neural network, uh, we can have a differential solution. I just show you uh, in a few minutes how. Uh, in this uh, setting, uh, we, we are mesh free, so we don't need to discretize our domain, and it's free from domain. So we are not restricted to the classical geometries like square, circle, and so on. It can, it can have some arbitrary domain, uh, and, and we can easily uh, incorporate some prior knowledge regarding the problem, uh, which, uh, which can uh, alleviate a lot of problems and can uh, help with the right uh, solution. Okay, so the basic idea is that we approximate our solution by a neural network, and how we train the network? We train the network such that it satisfies the PDE and the boundary conditions. We can think of it, it's like an unsupervised approach, basically, uh, because we don't need some pairs of X and Y, like in supervised uh, machine learning uh, approach. Okay, so let's see how we can do it. To, to, uh, to explain it, I'll give a very simple example. Uh, the example is the Newton's law of cooling. So what we have here, we have some vessel with some temperature for example, 100 uh, Celsius. And here we have the surrounding, uh, the surrounding of the, of the vessel has minus 10 uh, degrees Celsius. And the question is how the temperature of the vessel decays over time. What is the formula? So, uh, okay, so we call this T. T is the temperature of the vessel uh, as a function of time and M is the is the temperature of the surrounding. Okay, so uh, what we know from Newton's law is that the derivative of the temperature with respect to time is proportional to M minus T, where K is some constant regarding the, uh, the material, the environment, and, and so on. Okay, so uh, here we have the boundary condition. So we know that at T, at T equals zero, the temperature is 100. Uh, we know M and we know K. For example, K is like uh, 0.25. Uh, and this is the analytical solution. We know that the, temp the temperature decays in an, exp in an uh, exponential uh, fashion. Okay, this is uh, the analytic solution. So how do we solve it with the network? So here on the left, we can see the equation. And uh, what we are doing, we just move the k m minus t to the left to the left hand side. So we want the left hand side to be equal to zero. Okay. Now we define the very simple architecture of network. So the input to the to the network is t is the time. We have some one layer uh, perceptron, very simple one layer with uh, thirty neurons, and the output is the temp temperature. Okay. So now what we want we want this equation to be satisfied for every t, for every time. So we define a loss function. So this is the loss function. The, the, le the, the left term is actually the L2 norm of, the, of what we want, of uh, this, uh, this uh, term. And the second uh, term is basically the boundary condition. 
So we have like constraint optimization uh, regarding the, the temperature. Okay, so we have two terms and the loss function. And what's nice here, because, because we have a, a differential uh, 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 representation of, the, of uh, the temperature, because we uh, will formulate as a network, so we have the close formula for T. This is, of course, differential if we take a, a, a smooth activation function like tang hyperbolic tangent or si sinus or not really, for example, uh, like a smooth activation. So everything is differentiable. So this is the derivative of the temperature with respect to time. And the TensorFlow or PyTorch can use uh, automatic differenti differentiation. So uh, basically to do this, we need only four, four lines of, of uh, TensorFlow. So this is the loss function. We have tf.gradients, which calculates this derivative of the temperature with respect to time. And we have this definition of the loss, that's all. And we train this network. So we sample, we sample t, the time, uh, around some range. We add the boundary condition and we train the network with this loss. Okay, it converge very, very fast with very, very simple architecture. And here we can see the results. So the blue line is the analytical solution and the green, uh, the green uh, X is the estimated. This is what the network gave. Okay, so this is the basic idea. Uh, okay, so again, we define very, very simple architecture. Why? Because we are dealing with physical problems, so it's not like CNN and the, and the uh, complex uh, architecture for uh, image classification and so on. But we use MLP, very very simple MLP with a few layers and the uh, hyperbolic tangent like activation, and and this is enough to solve physical problem. Okay. So the input to the network is x1, x2, it depends on the dimension of the problem, and the output is u of x. So again, this is the analytical formulation of the network, and this is the activation. And of course, we can, we can derive it as much as we can, because everything is differentiable. Okay, so how do we train it? What we are doing, we don't discretize, as we said before, we just take point cloud. I mean, the point cloud represents uh, samples in our domain. Okay, this, these are the blue points, and the red points uh, stand for the boundary, for the, for the boundary point. So what we can do, we just uh, train the network with, with mini batches, where the mini batches contain these blue dots, which are inside the domain, and the red dots that uh, represent the boundary. Okay, so because we are don't, don't discretize, this shape is not limited to, to circle or to square or to something like that. It can be arbitrary because we just throw points in our domain. So that's why we are not limited to specific uh, geometry. But it's limited to the domain of the boundary. If you try to sample the points later out of the domain, you may get... Of course, of course, we, we sample the points inside the domain, but what I'm saying that the domain can have arbitrary shape. This is what I meant. Of course, you are right. Um, okay, so so we define the general loss function, like, like we said before. So uh, we want to, to solve LU equals F with the boundary condition. So this is, this is our loss function. So here, what we said before, this is the L2 norm. Uh, this is the L2 norm of LU minus F, like we saw before. And here, we added, we added another term, which is the L infinity term of, of this difference. What it means is that we don't want to uh, reduce the loss function in average. L2 means we, we reduce this in average, but we want to reduce also the, the largest deviation. So the L infinity says that we want to minimize the largest error that we possibly have. So it gives a lot of advantage, advantages. Okay, the third term is the boundary condition. Here we can add some regularization. And exactly the same 
The same formula, it's also for the inverse problem. It's, it's exactly the same. So we have the L2 fidelity and infinity, the boundary condition, and we can, we can tailor our regularization according to our problem. Okay, so this is the basic framework. Uh, so this is the new idea that we had, and this is uh, also our uh, contribution. Okay, so for example, we can, we can see an application which is real, with the, which is called EIT, Electrical Impedance Tomography, where uh, current is applied uh, on electrodes on the surface of the body, and the, the voltage is measured. And the idea is to, by, by knowing the, the current and the voltage that we measure, we can infer the sigma, I mean the, the properties of the body. Okay, this is some, uh, this is some imaging, uh, technique and uh, I don't get into the details but but this uh, satisfies some equation so the relation between the current the sigma sigma is the conductivity or density of the tissues of the body tissues and the electrical voltage is formalized by this by this equation we don't get into it I just want to say that once we have this equation we can use our ne neural network to find u and sigma, okay? So, okay, so I, I just uh, uh, do it in steps. So in the first step, we solve the forward problem. It means that we know, we, we assume that we know sigma, the conductivity, and we want to find u, the voltage. Okay, so this is the forward problem. This is what we calculate. This is the, uh, this is the, the equation. And we do, we do exactly what we, we talked before. And here we can see some results. So this is the current. Usually it's like a sinus, sinus the current. And this is the ground truth sigma. It's like a lung and a heart, some kind of approximation. Um, and here we can see the ground truth. The ground truth, the solution of the, of the equation that I showed you before uh, to, to this uh, scenario is given here. So here I solved it with the finite element method, uh, which uh, with, the, with the tools, I solved it in MATLAB, but uh, it's, it's also in other uh, platform. Uh, so this is the ground truth of U, of the potential, and this is the derivative of U with respect to X. So here we can see the derivative, the shape of this uh, sigma. And here we can see the, the results of the neural network. So uh, you see that it's, it's very similar to the, to the true. We have good uh, PSNR and MSE. And it runs like tw 12 minutes on this laptop. I mean, not GPU, no nothing. I mean, it's very, very fast. Uh, bec also, be because the network is very, very simple. The architecture is simple. It's not uh, computationally expensive. So, and the old method, it's the wrong time? <coughs> no, the old method, what's the difference? Ah, the FEM? Yeah. FEM, uh, I don't remember. I think it's also very quickly. Okay. It's also very quickly. Okay, so when I compare it with other method, with the method that was uh, published in uh, 2017, this method used only the L2 norm, not the L infinity norm. So you can see that we have some artifacts with this, uh, with this method. Mm -hmm. So the L infinity gives a lot of contribution. Uh, here we, we plot some histogram of the error uh, by, by our method and the, and the previous method, which didn't uh, use the L infinity norm. And you can see that that uh, the DGM method has more, more errors. So the histogram in the high errors is more, uh, uh, include more points than us. Uh, so this is very uh, important uh, observation. Um, next, what we did is the opposite. Now we solve the, the inverse problem. So we have some measurement on U, and now we want to find sigma, okay? so. We know you and we want to find sigma, so we do exactly the same. But here we used several measurements because we have a common sigma for different measurements. It's like an ensemble of measurements, okay? We, we are using some uh, measurement together. And again, we are using the same formula, exactly the same. I do the same idea. I just add some regularization about sigma because we have some prior knowledge 
that sigma is, is piecewise constant. And since it's piecewise constant, we can have this uh, regularization LP norm. Uh, it's like a constraint on the behavior of sigma. Okay, so we can add it very, very um, easily and the tensor flow of pie chart can derive it uh, very, very easily. Okay, so this is the result. This is the ground truth. Okay, we have two sigma uh, and this is our results. Okay, this is the reconstruction. You can see good MSE and PSNR in both uh, cases. Uh, the last, uh, just a minute, and here we used arbitrary domain. Okay, so uh, we said that we're not uh, restricted to, to classical geometries and we can use also arbitrary domain and the, the software is, uh, so it doesn't care. I mean, it's invariant to, to this uh, shape. And here we can see again the, the inverse uh, problem and we can, you can, we can find sigma exactly the same. Nothing, uh, nothing was changed. The software is exactly the same. Okay, so to summarize this part, uh, we used very, very uh, simple network, like four layers with the 26 neurons. We used the hyperbolic tangent for activation. Uh, uh, I used the TensorFlow with Adam. Now we move to PyTorch, but uh, this is ideal with TensorFlow. 12 minutes. Uh, I uh, use the eight, eight K points to, to sample points in the domain and the one K points in the boundary. And I have some hyperparameter, which was uh, How did you sample the points? Randomly, randomly. I just ran, uh, randomly sample in, inside this, the seal code. But the points are given to you? No, I just I can, I can, uh, I can sample it uh, whatever I care, I want, because it's unsupervised. I don't. I don't pay anything for this. I just sample points and that's it. So here we, um, uh, we saw the full tomography. The full tomography says that we know the U not in the whole domain, but only on the boundary. Because when we measure on people, we have the measurement only on the surface and not inside the body. Okay, so this is more and more challenging because we know you only on the boundary, and we know to reconstruct sigma and you inside inside the whole domain. Okay, so uh, wh what I did here, I just train, I, I just train f eight networks. Okay, eight network for you, and not one net network for sigma, and then we used alternate minimization. It means that we find you. Uh, given sigma, and then we gi uh, given near you, we find sigma, and vice versa. And we do it alternately. This was uh, more. This was more uh, expensive because we trained eight. Uh, we trained nine networks simultaneously. So here I used some GPU, but it was not very very expensive. So here we can see the. Here we can see the results. So uh, the left column is the ground truth. This is uh, the proposed, uh, without method, this is the reconstruction. And here I compare to, to other methods. Um, okay, since I don't have enough time, I just say very, very briefly that this approach is also uh, good for, uh, to solve eigenvalue problem. It means that we want to find the eigenfunction of some differential op operator. Okay, so I, I just do it very, very briefly. So we want to, to, to find the eigenvalue and eigenfunction of some operator. So L is the op L, uh, some uh, differential operator. This is the eigenfunction and this is the eigenvalue. And again, in the same, in the same setting, we, we, uh, we, we define this loss function. And uh, for example, for this, uh, for this case, you um, second derivative of u plus, uh, for example, for u, we know that the solution is sinus, okay? And uh, here we can see that after a few iteration, it converges to sinus. Uh, I don't have time to get more. I just say that, okay, I will skip this. I just say that we can, uh, we can do it uh, <coughs> Also, when we, when we want multiple eigenfunction together, we want multiple, uh, and we can impose some orthogonality constraint of the eigenfunctions. 
and we can we also did it in two dimensions. So he, here we can see the sinus. We, we, we find simultaneously four eigenfunctions together. Again, this is the architecture, and the output is the four eigenfunctions. And we also had it for uh, five, uh, five eigenfunctions. Here we can see the, the results, which are very close to the ground truth. And here we can see the results in two dimensions. So here we can see the, the eigenfunction of uh, Laplacian in two dimensions. So we see this, uh, this sinus uh, in two dimensions. Uh, and lastly, we did it also on the L shape. So uh, we see that we compare it to the to finite element method. Okay, so we have some also some theories, some convergence results, but I didn't, I don't talk about it here. Uh, so to conclude, um, deep learning can be very helpful in the solution of PDE. For example, if if we have uh, more dimensions, the more complex shapes, and so on, uh, we used it for tomography for Egan problem, and it can be uh, valid. It can be valid for more, much more problem. Uh, we can add some regularization, some prior knowledge. It's free from domain, and it can be easily extended to nonlinear problem, uh, more dimensional problem. Uh, and about sampling, we can use some more clever sampling, not just uniform, but uh, to find exactly how to sample. This is the, another open uh, question that we. But we still need the condition that. The problem is easily sampled, that you can easily sample the X and UX. Yeah, but we can sample it more uh, cleverly, for example, according to the gradients and according to other criteria. Okay, so uh, this is an active uh, uh, research that we continue. If someone is interested, so please uh, <laughs> let me know. Yes. Uh -huh. One word, one word that you emphasize is unsupervised. Yeah. But you're training something, so how can this something, and this is where something like this, if it's ah, either supervised, it's, in which case you know what you're training, unsupervised is not really training. Yeah, because in, so, in classical unsupervised, you need pair, you need X and Y. You need the uh, feature and you need label. That's but supervised. in supervised. No, I, I think that the right uh, thing is self supervised. It's not a, it's not the classical self supervised when we learn some feature. It's a, but it's more it, it, yeah. You, you can think of it like a label zero. Okay, so so the label is zero, but it's it's for free. We don't have to prepare the data. We don't have to prepare it. We just need to sample and then say, okay, you you want the PDE to be satisfied on these points. You don't need to prepare some ground truth. Okay, so th this is the, the point. So this is right to understand that you, you don't know the true label, but you do know the gradient of the label. Sorry? So it's true. Can I understand in fact that you don't know the label at the point, but you do know the gradient of the label at that point? No, we don't need label. I mean, okay, you, you, you can, you, yeah. The gradient is, is the function, function you find of mass. Yeah, I mean, the label is like zero, because you want something equal zero. So. It's not supervised in the in the in the classical sense, okay? You, we we just want the equation to be satisfied at this point. So so in this sense, it's unsupervised. When the model conditions have changed, you have to retrain. Yeah, good question. Something? Good question. When the boundary conditions are changed, we need to train again. But uh, now now I'm working about uh, a framework that will be more general that we can give to the input boundary condition. Very good question. Did you face a vanishing gradient problem? Because you use a vanishing vanishing gradient problem. If we uh, if we had which type of activation do you use? A hyperbolic tangent and and uh, siren. And siren. Siren. Siren is like a sinus okay. in the activation. And you, you didn't face like an exploding gradient or. Uh, we had some, I mean, it, it took a, w a while to converge, but uh, we did some learning, some learning rates, some optimization, but it was very, uh, not, not something uh, special, like uh, the classical things, the regular things, yeah. You incorporate the, the transient uh, transient um, like sources or sinks inside the, the function, like 
let's say you have a source of uh, current that's not uh, constant? We, we can formalize it. I mean, uh, we can take a problem, formalize it, and then, and th yes, I mean, uh, actually, it's very flexible. So every PDA we can formalize and, uh, and, uh, and declare the, the loss function. Yes. Ah, yes. <laughs> okay, let's take one, one last question. And, uh, okay, so I have some reference if someone is interested. One last question. Um, did you check... Uh, taking only the L infinity norm and not the L2? Well, uh, it will not, I mean, L infinity takes only top K largest error, so it's not enough. We need, we need the whole uh, information in the domain, okay? All right. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.